This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. We begin today's show in China, which is refusing to release three activists who were arrested while they were investigating labor conditions at a factory manufacturing Ivanka Trump brand shoes. The three men were working with a New York-based nonprofit, China Labor Watch. The group was reportedly planning to release a report next month revealing factory workers at the supplier, Huajian International, were forced to work excessive overtime, verbally abused and paid wages below China's legal minimum. China accuses the three investigators with using illegal surveillance equipment and interfering with the operation of the factory. China Labor Watch denies the allegations and says this is the first time in nearly two decades of its existence that any of its investigators have been detained and face criminal charges. Amnesty International has joined in demanding the release of the trio. On Monday, China rejected a State Department request to free the men, its statement that also marked the first time the government has confirmed their detention. This is China's Foreign Office spokesperson. The people you mentioned were summoned and investigated on suspicion of interfering with the company's normal operations and production activities. Public security officials also found they were in illegal possession of and under suspicion of using wiretapping or other professional surveillance equipment. Those people were detained in accordance with the law, and the case remains under investigation. The Ivanka Trump company has declined to comment on the case. The arrest came just weeks after Ivanka Trump secured three new new exclusive trademarks in China. The very same day she and her father, President Trump, had dinner with Chinese President Xi Jinping at Trump's private resort in Florida. Ivanka has also recently filed numerous additional Chinese trademark applications. According to The Wall Street Journal, 14 applications were filed by her business on March 28, the day before she was named White House advisor. Her company has said the applications were filed to prevent others from profiting from her name rather than as an attempt to boost sales in China. Ivanka Trump no longer manages her $50 million company, but she retains an ownership stake so she can still benefit from the company's profits. Uh, it was not Ivanka Trump herself that filed for the trademarks in China, but it was the company. To talk more about what this means, we're joined in Washington, D.C., by Kevin Slayton, who is program coordinator for China Labor Watch until last year. He knew the three investigators currently detained in China and has researched Chinese labor conditions for over seven years, continuing to monitor closely human rights and foreign policy developments in China. Kevin, welcome to Democracy Now! Where are these three um, investigators, uh, these three human rights activists inv investigating labor conditions? conditions at the Ivanka Trump brand factory. Where are they being held? Hi, Amy. Uh, currently, the three, according to information we have from uh, one of the um, investigators' lawyers who spoke to the media a couple of days ago, as well as, according to uh, other news media, they're being held in Ganzhou, which is in Jiangxi province, uh, which is in the southern part of China. And that's where the investigation, one of the factories that they were investigating, uh, is located. And under what conditions are they being held? Uh, to, I mean, a lot of that information isn't really known. Uh, we know from what the lawyer said that they were being held in, uh, that one of the people was being held in a group uh, cell of 20 people, that he had to sleep just a, uh, a couple feet away from a, a urinal. A bu they said of a bucket that, that people would use as a urinal, and he had to sleep like that, and it was, it was very said it was very uncomfortable. Um, I mean, one of the overarching problems here is that a lot of access is being denied, and China doesn't really have a—it has a terrible record of guaranteeing prisoners' rights um, and of torture, especially for people who could be political prisoners like these three. So, can you explain, Kevin Slayton, where this factory is, what it does, how you know and how these researchers knew that it was making Ivanka Trump brand shoes? Well, uh, just to be clear, I, I, I left China Labor Watch early last year, in, Mar in uh, February 2016, so um, I wasn't part of the investigation. Uh, however, um, I know from what I've read and, and some communication <clears throat> uh, recently with China Labor Watch um, that 
they uh, sent people undercover, uh, these three investigators. Uh, I, I don't know if all of them were undercover, but at least one of them was undercover. Uh, they were doing worker interviews outside of the factory and, and gathering other information around two factories that um, they, through worker interviews, and, and uh, I haven't seen video or pictures, but typically you would get video and picture to prove it. Um, the report hasn't come out yet, so I, I, don't, I don't know from the report if they got that information. But uh, typically, that's how you would uh, uh, show that the products uh, that you were, that you were uh, like Ivanka Trump's products or other brands, were actually being produced there. However, Mark Fisher, the company Mark Fisher, which uh, is the intermediary for uh, Ivanka Trump's production, um, did not deny that their products were being made there. Um, Ivanka Trump's company didn't deny they were being made there. <clears throat> so I, I think um, that it's not really a question whether or not they're being made in those factories. Um, the Chinese government said in the sot that we in the quote that we just played that these uh, men are being held under suspicion of using wiretapping or professional surveillance equipment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, this is the this is the what's what's been said uh, by um, the foreign ministry. It's also what. The actual the, the the official charges at least for one person that only one person we know about their actual charge, um, it's extremely unusual that in the context of labor investigations in China, somebody who's been involved in this for many years and also knows many people who had actually done these investigations in China, it's extremely unusual to actually bring this charge against somebody. In fact, it's unprecedented. Um, these sorts of investigations are not unusual. Uh, in, in China, the, the undercover whether it's undercover investigations or just asking workers in, into the labor conditions uh, connected to global supply chains. Um, as China Labor Watch has said to media, and I think you mentioned this, for almost two decades they've done hundreds of these investigations. And this sort of national level uh, reaction by the government is unprecedented. Uh, and, it, and it suggests something beyond just the investigations that they say uh, they've arrested these uh, these individuals for, uh, and uh, it's it's um, there's something unusual about this. You know, we can surmise that it may have something to do with Ivanka Trump's products, but we don't have direct evidence of that currently. And so, what is the State Department? Interestingly, the State Department under uh, President Trump, uh, what is it doing to have these men released? Um, well, I only know, I think, what, uh, what you may know from what the State Department has said, um, that uh, it, it made a statement um, calling for the release and calling for the guarantee of their, uh, of their legal rights, or the protection of their legal rights, and that was quickly dismissed by China's uh, government. Um, other than that, behind the scenes, uh, I'm, I'm unclear about what they may be doing. Um, I do think that uh, the statement might have had an effect, because the lawyer who's denied access uh, repeatedly um, to Hua Haifeng, the, one of the investigators, was given access shortly after we, it was reported and was given a, a good amount of time to talk to him. So um, it does matter when the U.S. government uh, says something, and even more, it matters when the buyers of these companies uh, say something. Um, in the past, it's not unusual for local governments. Now, I've talked about all these investigations that have occurred in the past. It's not unusual for local governments to have some to to uh, retaliate in some way towards investigators, but that retaliation is usually a slap on the wrist, kicking them out of the the city, um, uh, you know, firing, getting make sure they're out of the factory so they're not revealing more information. Um, but some of the the reaction that's been taken, uh, denying access to lawyers, denying access to family, not notifying family. Uh, blocking them from leaving the country days before they were even arrested, apparently. Um, this is this shows that this is a, a national level coordinated political case. and 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 the State Department comments, uh, the u s. government uh, uh, commenting on this, and the companies um, that may be at the center of this, particularly Ivanka Trump's company and Ivanka Trump herself, commenting on this in, in a way to call for uh, the the protection of the rights of these investigators is extremely important um, and could really have a, a dramatic effect on their treatment. I'd like to go back to Ivanka Trump speaking in April. She was interviewed about potential conflicts of interest by Gail King on CBS's This Morning. When we talk about the Ivanka Trump brand, you are no longer running the day to day. No, I'm no what longer. What have you done with your business? I have no involvement with any of it. And I felt like proximity 
to my father and to the White House and um, with my husband taking such an influential role in the administration, I didn't want to also be running a business. So I put it into trust. I have independent trustees. I have no involvement in its management and its oversight and its strategic decision making. But the trustees are family members, right? Your brother-in-law and your sister-in-law? They are. So but they're completely independent and I'm transparent about that. Can you see from the public point of view, yes, you put it in trust, but it's family members are thinking, well, is she really not involved? Do you really not get on the phone and say what's going on? Do you have no involvement I take, whatsoever? I take a legal document very seriously, and I wouldn't go through the pains of setting this up if I intended to violate it. So that is Ivanka Trump, your response, Kevin Slayton, talking about her company that's now run by her brother-in-law and sister-in-law. Right. I think that it's extremely— uh, well, at the time, she wasn't responding to this. It would be extremely disingenuous if she uses that uh, as protection, um, personal protection here, to, to disassociate herself with what of the human rights, the, the serious human rights violation and labor rights violations going on in her supply chain. Uh, whether or not she's directly involved with the management, uh, she is benefiting uh, from the profits of this company. This company is using her name, uh, and she uh, uh, continue, and she'll benefit even more after she leaves uh, office, whenever that happens. Um, let's talk about the facts that we do know. Hua Jin, this, this company that uh, is at the center of this, the factory is at the center of this in China, um, according to reports, produces something like 100 to 200,000 Ivanka Trump shoes per year. Uh, it's the third largest—a third, third of Ivanka Trump's orders come from this company every year. Um, They've been working with them reportedly for 10 years, which means, uh, based on my experience in this, in this uh, field, that makes them a strategic supplier. They are not a new supplier. This isn't a one-off. This is a long-term partner, which means that they're at the center of their business uh, and, and supply chain in China. Um, <clears throat> and uh, according to reports, they were producing up to this year, including in May, when these investigations uh, at least the preliminary investigation ends, uh, ended. So there is a direct association with Ivanka Trump's company, and therefore Ivanka Trump, uh, especially because she's still profiting off of these, um, with the three investigators and their arrests and the labor violations that they were investigating, um, the widespread labor violations that, that we uh, now are starting to get uh, information about. Um, so I think that uh, if she did respond in that, whatever legal protection or legal separation she has from the management of her company, if she were to use that response, it would be extremely disingenuous and unethical. Mm. I wanted to ask about, well, according to The Wall Street Journal, 14 applications were filed by her business on March 28, the day before she was named White House advisor. Ivanka Trunk's company has said the applications were filed to prevent others from profiting from her name, rather than as an attempt to boost sales in China. And The Wall Street Journal points out Ivanka no longer manages the $50 million company, but retains an ownership stake, so she can benefit from the company's profits. You have, talk, talk about disingenuous. Uh, so you have both those trademarks. And then talk about the dinner, um, where uh, her daughter um, sang in Chinese to the first Chinese family. Uh, she had dinner with the Chinese president and her father, uh, President Trump, at Mar-a-Lago. And talk mm -hmm. about what happened that day with the exclusive trademarks she was awarded. Well, I, I mean, I don't know a tremendous amount of detail about the process. I know about the the timing of it. I know that before she became White House staff, as you just uh, reported, uh, she um, had applied for multiple. Or her company had applied for multiple trademarks, um, and this is the same thing that that uh, it was the case with Donald Trump himself. Uh, uh, dozens, I think it was something like 30 trademarks, were approved shortly after he became president in China. Um, the, the trademarks are approved in China. And I think it just highlights this uh, a tremendous number of conflicts of interests um, that Trump has more generally, but specifically as it involves China and Chinese companies uh, and uh, Chinese state-owned companies, um, uh, or banks, I should say. Uh, there's news that Trump's uh, organization has a lot of debt with Chinese banks. Um, Trump, uh, we mentioned the trademarks. Uh, Trump himself has products, or his company has products that are uh, mostly produced in China. So there's lots of different um, uh, 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 intersections between China, Chinese companies, um, and, and really, even if they're private companies, they're, uh, they're, uh, it can be influenced by the government. Um, as we can see in this case. So I think there's a lot of leverage that they could use on the Trumps, or even curry favor through 
uh, this sort of act. We, it may not be direct, but, you know, this is a—it could be an indirect signal that, look, we're protecting your interests, Ivanka Trump and the Trump family in China. Um, and it, it could be an unspoken uh, favor. Um, so I think that there's a, a tremendous number of, of conflict of interests involved so, here. So you say this is highly unusual. Amnesty has joined in the call for these men to be released. Uh, what do you think President Trump can do as we wrap up, Kevin? If President Trump were for, forgetting for a second the conflict of interest, uh, just as president of the United States, at least for now, until he completely degrades the office of the presidency, he still has influence and he still has the ability, when he speaks about um, specific people, uh, to bring uh, their to, to, to raise the status of their case. And if he were to name these three, and if he were to talk specifically about this case and call for the release, um, I do believe that at the very least it will. Um, it will protect them within prison, as we've seen in many, many cases over the years of, of prisoner, political prisoners in China. It could get them protection from torture, um, but it could even secure the release or a, or a quicker release and a, and a faster uh, legal process. So uh, I do think that uh, uh, prioritizing this um, and mentioning them would benefit uh, the three investigators. And if we add on top of that the personal connections, I think that there's a a personal responsibility uh, on the part of the Trump family to do something about this. Kevin Slayton, pro, former program coordinator for China Labor Watch, knows the three investigators currently being detained in China. Um, thanks so much for being with us. We'll continue to Thank follow you, the story. When we come back, we'll go to Iran to learn what has happened in the attack in Tehran. Stay with us.